I mean, <laughs> good morning, Minneapolis. Hell is empty because all the devils are here. Welcome to another episode of Good Morning Minneapolis brought to you by Onsite Public Media. I'm your host, Toussaint Morrison. If you want to become a member of Onsite Public Media and help fund shows like this, where we also had The Basement Farmer and we have many documentaries on actions going around the community uh, that will be supporting black-owned businesses, you'll see that series coming up in a little bit. You can click on the link below to become a member. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. The past week in Minneapolis, how can you explain it? Emotional, traumatic, inundated by state-sanctioned violence, and entirely misrepresented by major media outlets. Either way, you can put those comments below in how you would describe the past week in Minneapolis, but today we're going to try to get at the events that have occurred over the past seven days in Minneapolis and possibly give some clarification to what's going on and what people may want going forward. So, let's rewind to June 3rd, 2021, here in Minneapolis, atop a parking lot next to Calhoun Square, racist name, in uptown Minneapolis. A black man, Winston Smith, was gunned down by U.S. Marshals and Ramsey and Hennepin County law enforcement officials by 10 shots, and they killed him. No body cam footage, no squad car footage, and none of the names were released of the officers that killed Winston Smith. What ensued afterwards were days of peaceful protesting at Lake and Gerard, near where Winston Smith was killed, and atop the parking lot where Winston Smith was killed. People held space and commiserated and held marches and rallies and speeches and community events to basically bring about some catharsis and to demand that some kind of clarity be brought to what happened to Winston Smith and why and who's going to be held accountable. However, 10 days after Winston Smith was killed on June 3rd, the night of June 13th, Nicholas Krauss, a 35-year-old white man, decided to speed his car at breakneck speeds through the intersection of Lake and Gerard, injuring several protesters that were there holding space and killed one. Now, again, we said that elected officials didn't say much about anything that happened to Winston Smith or the space or the protest going on until now. Mayor Fry had a press conference. So the residents and workers who call Uptown home, can, they can't simply have this city abandon them and we need to make sure that this area is, is open and accessible. And I'll also note, uh, that it's dangerous. To have the street closed off with makeshift barriers, as we've seen, has been dangerous both to patrons, to residents, and also to protesters. And we have an obligation to community to make sure that people are indeed safe. I'm sorry, what the f uh, Those improvised barricades usually are cop cars. I mean, why not just take the snatch vans that you have creeping around uptown like the Gestapo and have them block off traffic? You know who blocked people in outside of the Brooklyn Center Police Department after law enforcement shot and killed a black man, Dante Wright? Cop cars. You know who blocked people in on Highway 94 when they were just there to demand a fair election? Cop cars. You know who usually blocks people in outside of the governor's mansion when they're demanding that just somebody do their job inside of that big palatial estate? Cop cars. I mean, St. Paul Police Department has got it down to such a fine-tuned machine. They have like the metallic structures there ready for anybody at any point in time that just wants to block off Summit Avenue and say something. And you know what? Something was special about this press conference put on by Fry. This seemed like the most dad conference ever. For him to just say, and you know what? It, it, it's dangerous. Okay? It's dangerous to be in these streets. You know? Kids, get on the sidewalk. Stay on the sidewalk. Get out of the streets. Yeah. Now. Why not just address the thing that actually happened? Like, talk about the actual dangerous thing that just occurred instead of blaming protesters for being in the street. Actually point out that a white supremacist drove at breakneck speeds through an intersection intentionally to hurt somebody, and then protesters had to deal with further trauma with cops showing up with tear gas and rubber bullets instead of somebody to actually ask them how they feel and how they're doing after just witnessing vehicular homicide. And then out of nowhere, awakened from their hibernation right on time was Grandpa Mike Freeman. He was at least partially drunk. He drove up to the barricades on Lake Street. He decided that he was going to go over them and accelerate it rather than break almost like a Duke of Hazards driving stunt. Um, okay. How come when a white guy commits an extreme act of intentional violence, he gets compared to the Dukes of Hazard? However, when a black man gets shot in his car by law enforcement, is unarmed, he gets called a murder suspect. Thank you, Star Tribune. Star Tribune, where the facts matter about as much as black lives. Not at all.
Mike Freeman was partially right. Where the Dukes of Hazard is set in rural Georgia, where racism is prevalent and it has an overt allegiance to white supremacy. However, the difference between rural Georgia and Minnesota is that Minnesota proves you can be as racist, if not more, without all the Confederate flags. What's also dangerous is Mark Ringenberg. Yes, Mark Ringenberg, badge number 6030 of the Minneapolis Police Department, who was responsible for killing black man Jamar Clark. Mark Ringenberg was found on duty in riot gear and heavily armed on Lake and Girard during some of the protests. He was also found here during the daytime, just moments before Nicholas Krauss decided to plow through Lake and Girard, killing a person. Here he is giving a ticket to a car. Yep, there is Mark Ringenberg. He's looking at the camera. He's looking at the camera as if he barely remembers what he did. And if you'd like to call Mayor Fry and let him know that Mark Ringenberg badge 6030 has no business on the streets and should be relegated to desk duty or just be let go, you can call this number and let Mayor Fry know how you feel about that. And if we call him enough, he'll know that when that hotline ring, it can only mean 12. Also present in Uptown, knock knock, it's not Matt Severance because he don't knock before he come into your house. Yes, Matt Severance, badge number 6457, has been present in Uptown during the protests, also known as the Cop Whisperer, also known as Prince Alarming, also known as Saved by the Hair Gel. He issued a no-knock warrant that resulted in this. Case text writes, when Brubaker and Omari entered, they shot and killed the Armand's dog in front of the family. Brubaker and Omari then zip-tied Mr. Armand's hands and searched the house, destroying the Armand's personal property, but found no evidence of criminal activity in the house. The Armands maintained that they were in fear for their safety as well as that of their children and unborn child. Mrs. Armand's was pregnant at the time. That their sons feared for their own safety as well as that of their parents and that they suffered physical injury, post-traumatic stress disorder, property damage, and other damages as a result of the defendant's conduct. Minneapolis officer Severance prepared the application for the search warrant that led to this incident. We're not saying Matt Severance is a killer cop, but you may want to rain check if he says that he's organizing a surprise birthday party. I mean, who serves a no-knock warrant has officers barrel into a house, kill the dogs, and then find nothing? The guy who got second place in the Chandler Bing lookalike contest, Matt Severance, that's who. And he was all over Lake and Girard during de-escalation and during keeping the peace. So what would MPD rather people do? And that's what our plan is to eventually, um, hopefully these peace protesters will go home. Did you notice that? Yep, she, she almost said peaceful, but then she walked it back real quick. She didn't want to say peaceful. Did you notice it? I noticed it. You noticed it. We both noticed it. And then she suggested that everybody just go home. Whew, if Katie Blackwell were in charge of curfews, well, everywhere would be a sundown town. Blackwell continues. We, we ask that they, if they do go out there, that they stay on the plaza and not take over intersections and create barricades of vehicles, create barricades of our local businesses, items that they use in their own businesses, and, and we're just trying to keep it peaceful as well. And we're trying to avoid those confrontations. Oh, no, that is incorrect, actually. Peaceful protesters stood on the sidewalk and in the plaza and were still accosted by police. How do I know that? Because I was there. And a actual officer shot a rubber bullet, missed, hit a chain link fence, the fence went down, and then the cops bum rushed through the fence, made arrests without dismissal orders. So this flies against entirely what Fry was talking about, that there would be dismissal orders made before arrests were made. That's just not true. They have snatch vans driving around uptown picking off people, and they also have officers that are using violent tactics and methods before any dismissal orders are made or really any orders are given at all. Deanna Kanaitik, the peaceful protester who was killed by Nicholas Krauss when he sped through the intersection of Lake and Girard, it took media outlets almost 48 hours to actually name Nicholas Krauss when people on the ground were already naming him, knew him, and he was apprehended by citizen arrests. NPR News, nearly exonerated Nicholas Krauss by writing this. A 35-year-old St. Paul man was booked into the Hennepin County Jail early Monday on suspicion of criminal vehicular homicide, driving after a license was canceled and providing false information to police. The man who hasn't been formally charged has multiple convictions for driving while impaired, according to online court records. Less than 24 hours after Deanna Kanadik was killed by Nicholas Krauss, NPR News refused to name Nicholas Krauss while all the independent media outlets on the ground knew his name, saw what he had done, and reported who he was and what he had done. As well, NPR News decided to add in the fact that he had a litany of drinking and driving and driving under the influence, which exonerates him and maybe names this as an accident as opposed to an intentional act of vehicular homicide or 
a domestic terror attack and hate crime. Pair this with less than 24 hours after Winston Smith, a black man who had been killed by law enforcement officials, NPR News felt comfortable using propaganda and being a mouthpiece for the BCA. NPR News writes, A handgun and spent cartridge cases were found inside the vehicle, according to a release from the BCA. Smith was wanted on a warrant for a felony firearms violation, authorities said. It's important to note that they're also saying what the BCA said and what authorities said. They are becoming a mouthpiece for law enforcement. And it's also extremely important to note that the passenger inside the vehicle with Winston Smith reported that they saw no firearm on him and that they saw no firearm in the car. So again, NPR News is reporting the word of the cop as opposed to the people involved. NPR News taking a page out of Star Tribune's book on journalistic integrity. In other news, a new black-owned business has opened up in Uptown. How many times do we get to say that? I don't know, but we're going to say it today because a new black-owned business has opened up in Uptown at 2649 Lindale Avenue South. That's right on the corner of Lindale and 27th on the second floor. Faded, a new barbershop has opened up and it is here for the public. So get on down to Faded, a new barbershop, a new black-owned business opened up in Minneapolis. We're going to keep reporting on black-owned businesses as time goes forward. So if there's any black-owned businesses that you want us to do profile pieces on, please put it in the comments below. We can cover as far as Minneapolis and St. Paul and a little bit outside of it, uh, but we are kind of withheld to the limitations we have right now with the, the small crew that we work with. Also, celebrating black artists in the city, Louis Blaze has released a new music video, and you can check the link to that below in the description. And if there's any other black artists that you would like us to link or, or mention in the next episodes, we'll be happy to do that. You can email us at onsitepublicmedia at gmail.com to keep shows like this going and other coverage that we do. You can click the link to become a member below, and you can just support by watching or sharing the link to this video. Thank you so much. I'm Tucson Morrison, your host of Good Morning Minneapolis. This is Onsite Public Media signing off. Our work is never, ever, 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 ever done. <laughs>